Sunday service. So happy to be back in the house of God. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, Prince of Peace.
God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. We give you honor, God. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we Truly, we've got something to be thankful for. Another day that God has allowed us to come out and 
be in his presence and just celebrate the goodness of God. I'm so thankful today for being here. Amen. We're going to do our promo and then we're going to get back into this service and just give God all the glory, honor, and praise. God bless you. Remember that there is always victory, no matter where you are in life. You have to bridge every gap, make the highest hopes for your vision and your dreams in life. You most definitely have to help others, show love to others in kindness, be gentle to all, love those that most would consider unlovable, Treat them with love and kindness. Give even when it hurts. You have to love even when you don't want to love. Smile when change is on the horizon and know that God is getting ready to bless you. Stand under the cross with arms wide open. Always be blessed and be loved by those that surround your life. Pray with those that love you. Pray with those that you are partnering with in life. Love those that surround your life. Always go back to the water. Because in the water there is healing. There is deliverance. And most definitely, you can be set free. I know some people are going through some hard times. But put on your good walking shoes. Walk forward. And know that the Arms of Love Praise Center is here for you. We'll never stop moving forward. We'll continue to smile in the face of hard times. We are that rising phoenix that will never give up. That smells like the great roses that life wants you to breathe in every day. Remember, we love you at Arms of Love Praise Center. God bless you. Well, come on here and give God some praise. Thank God for that promo. We're almost start doing a new one on that. Almost a new one for a new year. A new one for a new year. God is doing so many great things. I know some of y'all are probably wondering why I have on this camouflage today. But it's because I'm a soldier.
Thank you, Heavenly Father. God, thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We have some people in the building with us today. My brother Blue is with us today. Of course, as always, my brother Beth is here with us today also. So thankful for them. One of the first things I want to do today is wish my father happy birthday, Prophet Mooney. <laughs> happy birthday to him. So many great things that God is doing. I also, Br Brother Blue, would you like to have any words today? Anything you'd like to share with us? Um, yeah, why not, okay. right? <laughs> Let him come on up here. Come on and share. Thanks for having me today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Apostle Lyric. Um, you know, just a couple of things that I'd like to uh, reiterate. Um, it's about God providing. 
And I'm so thankful that every time that it seems like we put our faith into things, faith doesn't seem to pay the bills, but what faith does do, it allows you that opportunity to see it with inside yourself and to see the Lord inside of you. And every time I seem to just do little things for him, he just decides that he wants to provide. And so I'd like to say thank you for allowing me to be here because the more I sit here, the more that I'm realizing God is providing all by faith. So I appreciate you for having me today, and I appreciate that I get to see here and hear them praises. Amen to that. You know, it ain't nothing like a moving church that's moving around and excitement about the music, but I'm very thankful. Um, also wanted to just kind of mention that uh, Sister Lyric and I have gotten together and we created our own little uh, God's Kitchen. And so once a month we try to get together with the church to uh, give us an opportunity to bring people in to do more than just worship, but to be able to just gather together breaking bread with brethren. So um, if you're available this uh, this Saturday, um, at 6 p.m., we're going to serve dinner, and um, we're going to show the movie The Color Purple, the new one. So come on out and join us. Bring a chair. Bring a blanket. We're going to sit out in the garden. We're going to set everything up so we have a little outside movie. We're going to have some fun. Um, I know you're taking a trip, so I got you, sister, because, you know, it's always about having your back. But um, I'm really glad that you have my back and giving me an opportunity to speak today. So I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Apostle Lyric. And I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to be in here. Hey, man, what a, what a wonderful thing uh, me and Brother Blue have begun to do together. And uh, God has just been really good to us, you know, uh, blessing us you know, so much uh, lately. First, I, I think the first thing I really want to do is tell you all about how our, our journey has been going with us doing our, uh, <clears throat> with us doing our, uh, with us doing our, uh, our tour, the moon. April 19th, okay. April 19th, we're gonna be in Abilene uh, doing, uh, we're gonna be out there for the Mooney Praise Experience. Please come out and support, join us. Uh, of course, that's gonna consist of Bishop E.A. Mooney, who is my mother, uh, my little sister Shami, and uh, myself, and some also some local talent there in uh, Abilene. So we're, we're just trying to really just do and be in the will of God with what God is uh, showing us. Albuquerque was a wonderful experience. Uh, here in LA was a wonderful experience. Uh, we had my brother Blue and my brother Kyle. Uh, Tay, my partner, was there uh, as our backup singers and they were doing a wonderful job. Um, so it has been quite the experience uh, for all of us. And many times when we look at things, we don't realize how much God provides for us. We oftentimes, people forget the goodness and the mercy of God. You know, and throughout this whole experience, uh, God has truly been providing for us financially, uh, you know, uh, God has just really been providing for us. And I'm so thankful to God for that because when you pray, when you pray, things change. And I'm thankful to God that through our prayers, we have been able to uh, be able to go out and minister to God's children. And so, you know, uh, Abilene right now, we've done... Uh, this will be our third state that we've done. And I, I don't see that this will be the last one, but I know we'll probably take a little bit of a break after this one, and then probably may start up again and do another three states and start right here at our home in LA. So I'm, I'm thankful to God for that um, and everything that God has been doing for us. Anyway, today I, I uh, I've been learning a lot of things about life. Let me pray. 
Father God, I thank you, God. I thank you first, God, that you died and you rose for us. You sent your son and he died and rose for us on the third day. I thank you that he went and got the keys. <laughs> thank you. And I thank you, God, that your salvation is not just for one person, one race, but for all of your children, God. Your word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but should have everlasting life, God. That whosoever, God, is whosoever will come in whatever manner they may come to you, God, broken, in hurt, in pain, God. I thank you, Father God, that you love us through all of that, God. God, I thank you today for this word that you have given me. I thank you, God, that even as this word is delivered today, God, that people will not just be awake in their physical being, but they will be woke in their spiritual being, God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the great things that you are revealing to us, God, on a daily basis, God. Showing us and guiding us. And God, I give you praise, honor, and glory, God, that you are yet moving and yet working through me, God. God, I dedicate this work to you, God. My life, I dedicate to you, God. God, that every word that comes out of my mouth today, God, be of your will, God, not of mine, God. Remove my flesh, God, and allow me to minister up under your anointing, Heavenly Father. I thank you, God, even right now, for your anointing, God. I thank you, God, that you are yet moving in our lives, God. I thank you, Heavenly in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I begin to think about things as we've been on this journey with this counseling. And I've been seeing a lot of things in the world. I know a lot of us watch the news. Some of us may not. But I've been seeing a lot of things going on in this world that are harmful to so many people. And the word that God gave to me was the light. Where is the light in the world? Are people just walking around? Are people really seeking after God? Are people really chasing after the heart of God? Are they chasing after the heart of man? And as I begin to think about this, this week's sermon is titled, Who Turned On The Lights? And when I say who, turns on, who turned on the lights, I want you to know that everything we do eventually will have a light shined on it. Everything we do in this life. Now there are many people amongst us that are awake. Like right now, I'm awake. I'm conscious, I'm aware of my surroundings. I know that there's chairs over there. I know that Blue is sitting there. I know that Jeff is sitting there. But are people woke? Has that light come on? Are they aware, are they conscious? Are they evolved? Are they inclusive? The word inclusive has been taken and used as a word by many that they feel everyone is not inclusive. Everybody should not be included. Everyone should not be a part of this table that Jesus set before us. And this is what it brought me to. I often wonder what Eve's first thought was when she was tempted by the devil and what she felt after her first taste of the forbidden fruit. Many of us have been eating some forbidden fruit. We got that first taste 
and it was not just enough to have that first taste. We had to go back and get a little bit more. But by them tasting of this forbidden fruit, a light in Adam and Eve was turned on. They had gained great knowledge because of their sin of disobedience to God's commandment to not eat of the one tree in the garden. Because of that sin and many other sins, God has sent his son into the world to redeem this world. There was a new light, the light of Jesus. There was a new light that had to be manifest and shine in a new move of God's unconditional love for all. Let's fast forward a little bit here. We all know we just have went through the Holy Week and we were talking about everything that Jesus went through. But Jesus was tempted in the desert for 40 days and for 40 nights. But he fasted and prayed and asked for strength. In our weakest moments, the devil tests us. Just as he did Jesus. He told Jesus, hey, you don't have to be hungry. Turn these stones into bread. And Jesus' reply to him was, man shall not live by bread alone. And then he told him again, as he took him up, and he said, go ahead and throw yourself down. And Jesus again replied to him, don't put your God to the test. The devil if he tempted God, he will tempt you. If he tempted God's son, he will tempt you. He also told him, all this I shall give you if you fall down on the ground and worship me. Jesus' reply was, I'm not doing that. While Jesus was going through all these things, the light of God was being built inside of him. Today I want you to know that many people are asleep to the ways of the world and distracted by the troubles that loom above them on a daily basis. Some are just simply unaware while, while others just choose to turn a blind eye to all situations that they feel don't concern them. We should constantly be in prayer about our life our world. More than that, we should be concerned about how God is looking at us. What is God seeing in us? What are we doing that is unpleasing to God? I most definitely do not want to bear, be the bearer of bad news, but change is upon us. Great change. And some of us will miss it because we have lost the connection with God. Many only see through the physical eyes. Even on this week, the last couple of days, the Statue of Liberty was hit, struck with lightning. And I felt in my spirit that there was something going on with that. It doesn't matter that it's been hit over 600 times, but God is beginning to reconstruct some things change some things, fix some things. And we cannot lose the connection with God. When Jesus ascended into the heaven, he said that he would send us a comforter. That is the light that lives inside of us. That is the light that lives inside of us. This is not a wall that we can become complacent in. We must begin to walk up, wake up spiritually. We must begin to wake up spiritually. The light must be turned on. Somebody say, turn on the light. The true light of God 
how can we heal the world if we have darkness and light moving and working in us? How can we change the world? The word of God says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That means if you're straddling the fence, that's another scripture that God will spew you, spit you out of his mouth. He's not going to deal with that. You've got to pick one side or the other. Either you're working for God or you're working for the devil. But I came to tell you today, it's time to turn on the light. How often do we curse things that we don't understand? How often do we condemn one another to hell? How often do we show hate instead of love? Hallelujah. Jesus is the light that came to the world. He came here on an assignment. Jesus knew his assignment and followed through with it in great weeping and great surrender. He was beaten, stripped of his earthly honor, whipped, spit on, and placed in a cell of total darkness. Many of us that profess to love Jesus have caused many to spiritually abort their God-given gift, yes, because we judge them in an ungodly manner and claimed it was God's will. John 3 and 17 says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Jesus came into this world with the light. We must turn on the lights of God, perfected will in God's children's life. I'm ready for my scripture. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. When was the last time you let your light shine? So many people have become so complacent in judging people that they don't even realize what God is trying to do through someone's life. How about we just sit back? as preachers and teachers and members of the church and learn how to love people where they're at. Love people where they're at. Since when did God tell you to judge people? The word of God says, judge not, least ye be judged. So we must learn to love people no matter where they're, they are at in their lives. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed. Whatever you've done, <laughs> wherever you've fallen short, it's getting ready to be revealed. And all that is secret will be made known to all. Anybody watch the news lately? It's a lot of things going on in the news. You know, even the amount of money you have won't cover you now. This is a year of enlightenment where things that have been hid under covers, God is beginning to uncover because God is tired of a lot of the things that we are doing. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. Mm. And what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. How do you deal with that? As a preacher, you have to know that no matter what you do, <laughs> when it is time to give an account, you will give an account for it. In John 8 and 12, it says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Zombies are for real. <laughs> Let me just tell y'all that. They're for real because there are a lot of people that are walking around here lost because of things that other people have done to them. Spiritually, people are lost because of things that have been done to them. In 
my life, in my journey, I have learned so many things. One of the things that I have learned is to love. Love does not always come easy. Love is not an easy thing. But if you can learn to walk in the light, if you can learn to let God be your God, if you can learn to understand that the will of God is the only perfect will, hatred is running rampant right now. People don't want to go into churches because they feel that. They just want to go and be able to praise God and thank God for another day. And I need to go ahead and say this. God is not concerned about your sexuality unless you are using your sexuality to abuse someone with it. He's concerned about your salvation. So for every person that has ever felt that when you walk in the door, all they see is your sexuality and not your salvation, I want to tell you today, don't worry about it, baby, because there is something coming in the air that is getting ready to heal this world. God is not a respect of person. It doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is where you're going. Are you going to the light or are you going back to the darkness? Are you straddling the fence because you're unsure exactly where God is leading you? But I want to tell you today that God is getting ready to do something in your life. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, let me tell you this today. You have been renewed in your mind. The light of God has come to you. There is only one thing you have to do to do that. It's confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you shall be saved. Why are people turning away from God? They're tired of the hypocrisy, all the hypocrites in the church. They just want to be able to go and say, God, I thank you that you even let me wake up this morning. I have a cousin that just recently got out of jail. Today he was baptized. Do you see the necessity of people knowing how to love? I don't care what church you go to. When you walk in that door, if you don't feel love, running through that building, turn around and get up out of there. Because anything that is not what Jesus said when he left here is not the will of God. When Jesus ascended, he said to love one another. He told you, don't you do nothing to your neighbor that you wouldn't do to yourself. We must, in these last days, learn how to serve God in the trueness of God. It's easy for people that have been hurt and pushed aside to learn how to love. Love has never been a hard thing for me. I love everybody. I, I, I even love people that don't love me. You want to know why? Because that's what Jesus requires of me. And I cannot allow that hate to become a cancer in my body. I cannot be the light that God has called you to be. Be that beacon that God has called you to be. It's not up to us to tell people how they should live their lives. It is up to us to give them the word. Once you give them the word, let God do the work. Let God do the work. God is looking for people that will just love broken people because there are so many broken people right now. How can you heal a broken world if you broke it? You first must be mended. I want to tell you this today. I've had a friend for over, since I was 13. I'll be 53 next month. I've learned so many things 
in ministry. I've learned so many things in friendship. I've learned even more things because of my mother, Bishop E. Amos. I've seen her betrayed by people that she considered her brothers and her sisters. Jesus wasn't the only one that had a Judas in his camp. But Jesus kept, mm, hallelujah, his light. He never let his light go. He never let his light go, even though he knew what was getting ready to happen. And I can say that about my mother. Even in the midst of all the betrayal and all of the slander that she went through behind me and her choosing to love her child and let God do the work within her child. Even people telling her to kick me out of the church. What if she would have submitted to that? Where would I be at right now? But even in that, I've learned that everybody is not always going to be in your life. That there will be some friends that will be there forever. But another thing I learned is no one will ever say that I betrayed. No one will ever say I was a Judas. They may say it, but it won't be true. Let me tell you why. Because I listen to the word of God. The word of God says, by love and kindness have I drawn thee. That's how Jesus drawed me. Love and kindness. Love and kindness. Who are we to think that we shouldn't do it any other way? Love and kindness. Past will change. I've learned in these 52 years of life that there will be people that will stay with me. But there will be people that will leave my life. And my desire is that when people leave my life, we separate in love. Let's just separate in love. Thank you for your time. I appreciate what you brought to my life. Whether it be good or bad, I appreciate it because you taught me something. I learned from that situation. The majority of my friends I've had for 10 years or longer, I have people in my life like that. Let your light be what leads you. Let the love of God that is inside of you be what leads you. Not your flesh, not what you may be feeling because you're hurt, but let the love of God that is in all of us be what leads you and directs you. Not your friend. Listen to what God says. I knew when we were going to Albuquerque that there was going to be a great shift, a great change in my life. And I began to weep and talk to God about it. God, what is it that you would have me? And you sit and you go, God, I love this person. They've been here all this time. But I understand the purpose that you have for them. And I will walk in this purpose, God. I will work in this, walk in this purpose because I know it is your plan for my life. As I wept, God gave me comfort. I felt as though there was, a, there was a weight that came up off of me because I knew that there was no friend like Jesus. My mother sings a song, and it's called Only Friend. 
I'm going to have to have her come and sing it for you all one day. She wrote it, and it, it says, if I search this whole world just to find one true friend, Jesus, I find no friend like you, someone to care and someone to share. Jesus, I find no friend like you. And then she says, you will be the only friend I need. You will be the only friend I need. Jesus, you will be Sometimes that's all you need. It's just Jesus. Just Jesus. And he will guide you into all truth. Turn on your light. God has gifted so many of his children, but because we don't see them in that light, some of us, we don't see them in that light because they're not like us. Everybody that comes to me, I'm like, God, what, what is it you want me to help them with? What is it you want me to help them with? And I need to say today to my brother Lou, I'm proud of you for stepping out and trusting God and knowing that this is the will of God for your life. I am so proud of you because sometimes people give up. But there is a freedom in knowing that the light has been turned on. Tell somebody, turn on the light. Turn on the light. I'm ready to roll with, with God. Wherever you lead me, Father, I'll follow. Whatever you may have me to do, God, I'll do. Because you are the only friend I need. In those times when I'm feeling down and no one else is around me, Jesus said he will send a comforter. And when that comforter came, he turned on the light. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, God, that even here, God, we've been hearing more about being woke. And it is absolutely nothing wrong with being woke because it's a lot of us that need to just go on here and wake up. God, I thank you, God, that while there are so many still in darkness, God, even right now, Father God, you would turn on the light, God. Those that are wondering whether to go to the right or the left, God, I thank you that you're turning on the light, God. Mm, my God, I thank you, Father. I thank you, God. That you are turning on lights, God. Not just turning on lights, God, but you are opening doors that no man can shut. Hallelujah. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are moving on our behalf. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that your perfect will is happening in our lives. Thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you see every trap that may be set for us, God, and that you've already blocked it, God. I thank you, Father. I thank you. God, I praise you, and I give you glory, and I give you honor today, God, that the light is turned on. I thank you. Thank you, God. Just want to give God glory. You know, 
because there's so many people that are in darkness, but God is turning on the lights. We don't have to live in darkness anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeff, do you have any uh, music over there you can play for us? Hallelujah. Sometimes when we weep, those tears that we cry are healing us. They're delivering us. They are setting us free. And I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for every. you see every tear that you would mend broken hearts God even right now God I pray for those God that are lost because of things that may have been done to them God Father God bring them home back to the arms of back to the arms of praise, back to the arms of worship. I thank you, God. Even right now, God, I pray for my brother Ed, Lord God. I speak healing to his body, God. Even when you sent us to this earth through our mother's womb, there was no sickness in us. And God, your word says that you wish above all things that we would prosper and be in good health. God, for every person that we prayed for this morning, Lord God, I pray for my brother that lost his home, God. Bless us. I pray for him, God that you would begin to open doors and show him great miracles, God. I thank you, Father. I pray for she, God. Even right now, God, touch, heal, and deliver. I pray for my wife. Give her strength, God. Let her know that she is never alone, that you are always there with her. I pray for my brother Blue God, as he begins to walk even deeper in this journey with you, God. Let him dream dreams and have visions of the things you would have him to do, God. I thank you, God. God, for my brother Jeff, God, bless him even the more, Lord God. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on him that he would not even have room enough to receive God. Just put it in the storehouse for him. So whenever he needs a miracle, he can just call it forth. God, I thank you for Pastor Pat and Reverend Mary Ann. For their willingness to love on those that so many would consider unlovely. For how they have opened the church up for great change and great renewal of the mind, God. I thank you for every minister in this church. I thank you for Michael Crane, God. Gift him even more, God as he begins to play the organ, Lord God. We thank you, God, for the great gifts that resonate in this building, Lord God. Every voice that prays and cries out to you, God. 
let them know that you are there. That you are there. And that you are a very present help in the time of storm. I pray for Bishop Moody and Prophet Moody. My little sister. My nephews. Just my family, God. For those that have fallen away, God. Bring them home. Let them know that God loves them. Let the light on them, God. I thank you. I thank you. I pray for Christy's mother, God. Heal her hands, God. Wherever the arthritis may be, God, I know that you are healed. I claim and I stand in posse for her mother that your healing will flow. There are many things that we don't understand, Lord God. But God, I know you love all of your children. And you love them unconditionally. I thank you, Father, that you are the greatest love of our lives, God. And all you ask is that we seek ye first the kingdom of God and that all these things shall be added unto us. God, I pray for grace. Touch her, God. Let her know even more about your love and your kindness. Through her mother at very end, God. Let her see that more every day, God. God, I thank you for your greatness, for your mercy, for your kindness. I thank you. I thank you, God, for every member of this church. every act of love and kindness that is shown, God. And God, I ask even right now, God, that you would just place a hedge of protection around this church, God. Let everyone that comes in this building steps their foot onto the pavement, Lord God. God, I pray and I do this day that lives will be changed. That broken hearts will be mended. God, I see you calling us. And God, we are standing, God, in your presence, knowing that you are working all things out to your perfect will, God. Not our will, but let your will be done. Let this be the beacon, God, the lighthouse, God. Let this be, God, the sanctuary where people run knowing that they will see and feel your glory and your presence and your love, God. Let us love on those that are hurting and not judge them, God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day. To just say yes, God. I say yes, God, to your will and your way. Direct me, God, as an apostle, as a leader, God. Let me never think that I am any higher than anyone, God. Let me stay humble and in my purpose that you have given me to heal and love on those that are. Let me always be in your spirit of love, God. I thank you, God, for this service. I thank you, God, that things are changing. I thank you, God, for your presence, God. Once
rest of you in my life, in all of all of us. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. And if you don't know Jesus, in the midst of your sin, let me tell you that he died and he got up and he got the keys. He got the keys for you. So today, all you have to do is say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose from me. I accept you in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. Renew me this day. Turn on the light in me, God, and let your fire, your anointing flow through me, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you all. God bless you. Remember, you are all welcome to the table of God. All you have to do is say and confess with your mouth. I love you all. As always, God bless you. Stay prayed up, y'all. Don't ever stop praying. Pray without ceasing. I love you all. God bless you. Love you.